Hi, my name is Mary Louise Hart, and I'm an Associate Curator of Antiquities here at the Getty Villa. My sp one of my specialties is uh, ancient jewelry, okay. and I was very proud to have had the opportunity to work on and to write about the spectacular ensemble of ancient Ptolemaic jewelry. So this is a jewelry uh, group consisting of numerous pieces, all of which seem to have come been made together at the same time. Okay. They're all made up from the same uh, type of gold. Um, all of the details seem to have been worked in the same way, and they were all um, they were all found together. They've all always been together. So when you say the same type of gold, the same sort of purity yes. um, yeah. of gold? Okay. The same purity of gold. So this ensemble of jewelry dates from about 220 to 100 BC. Okay. It's Hellenistic, and we think it was made in Alexandria. It's a product of the Ptolemaic royal court, Okay. not the queen herself, probably because it lacks the kind of iconography associated with her cults. Okay. But probably belonged to a priestess who um, who was part of the royal entourage. Okay. Royal so this would have been a very high status individual. Would have been very high status and all of these objects would have presumably been worn by the same person all at the same time. Okay and they do show signs of wear. Okay. And the two pieces that we looked at, which are the two most dramatic pieces of the set, are the fabulous um, openwork hairnet mm -hmm. and the, the beautiful diadem which surmounted the head of the woman. Now, the, they're both rather small, so clearly the, whoever wore them um, was a very petite person, right. had a very small head, but, you know, of a... Of a of a feminine stature, it's mm -hmm. not too hard to believe that they could have all been worn. There are also a pair of snake armlets that would have been worn above the elbow, okay. and there's a, another pair of golden snake bracelets that would have been worn at the wrist. So we have lower. to imagine some of the imagine really of delicate, that. wealthy garments, maybe silks or, or yes, really absolutely. fine. And you should think of someone like Cleopatra, but yeah, a few years yeah. before her. I mean, very much the, the Cleopatra ensemble of the snake bracelets. And right. there's a lot of magic and a lot of, um, a lot of meaningful uh, messages in this jewelry, mm. all of it carried by the gold. Okay. Which is going to be the most valuable material that they could find to right. work with and to, uh, to carry the messages. There are also several sets of earrings, okay. some of them with dangling Eros figures, some of them are little ram's head style earrings, which are very, very popular during this period. Mm. Very normal. Um, they're not always in gold, but they're, they're a normal style of earring. And huge um, cabochon gem rings. And these are rings that, that are so big that they go across the hand. Okay. Right? And they're yeah. used for seals. And uh, one uh, has an engraving of Tyche and the other one has an engraving of Artemis okay. on it. One so would, would the, what, what sort of iconography did you find overall on these? I mean, you talked about the snakes, but um, okay. the, diet, the, the hairnet itself had Venus and Cupid, right? Yep. That, well, in this period, we call them Aphrodite and right. Eros. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so it's, it's, the, these hair nuts like this are rare and, as you can mention, extraordinarily special. The center medallion is made by Repousse, which right. is um, pounding out from the back into a form that makes the essential uh, figure into a mold. Mm -hmm. And then they're turned around and they're chased from the outside and right. polished off. This one has Aphrodite and her little son Eros um, coming over her shoulder. Right. It also exceptionally has um, um, theater masks, which help to anchor the um, strands of gold spools that come down the sides of the hairnet. Okay. So. It is, it is known that the Ptolemies had a great fondness for theater, and they love performance. And, oh, okay. And so there's sometimes you do see theatrical references in the artwork. So maybe this would be the sort of thing that you would wear out on a night on the town. Well, to, I think to, I think so. Theater. Or you know, it's 
Yeah, exactly, and and also to religious cults that have performance involved. Okay, yes, with that's them as true. Well. Right. It's not, it's you know they don't they still they're not to the point where they're thinking of going to a play like we would. Right. Um, just you don't just get dressed up for it, and um, the fact that that hair nut was worn with a diadem that has flaming torches on the side of it. Right. Is a sign that it was used for. Um, for religious or ritual purposes, because whenever you have flaming torches as an attribute or as iconography in ancient art, you know that we've got some sort of a divine procession or situation going on. Okay. Because that's okay. torches were symbolic of that. Right. Now on the on this diadem, the flames of the torches are made by by the metal worker having twisted um, um, threads of gold yes. into the shape yeah, of flames. Yeah, wonderful. And they're spectacular. They're yeah. absolutely spectacular. Well, it looks like some of them were sort of long, narrow, like narrowing strips that, mm -hmm. that were cut at an angle um, because they, they get, seemed like increasingly smaller um, towards the, the end. Towards the center? Yeah. Towards the Heracles knot? Yeah. Yes, it's true. It's true, and they um, they emerge from a sort of a foliate um, that is a very um, what would what it would be is that both the fire and the the um, gosh what would you call it the thing that holds the torch there are delicate floral tendrils that are worked in gold filigree mm. around the golden flames right. And there are also um, um, tassels. Yeah. So one of the one, most wonderful things about both the hairnet and the diadem are these tassels that come around, um, come around the head and the back of the head of the woman who wore them, and then the hairnet at the back has two drops of, right. of multi-tiered tassels. And she um, would have jingled as she walked. She would have caught the light and and it, yeah. all over her head, around her head on the top, and then along down the back. She would have looked absolutely gorgeous mm -hmm. from profile and from the back as well because then you would have gotten the full effect. Right. So you have to think of people who don't have um, electric lights and they've got candles and flickering, you know, beautiful candlelight right. and fires around and then the way that gold catches light and then garnets especially. Well, that's um, interesting to imagine her suddenly unveiling all of this, sort of yes. taking off a veil from being yeah. outside, and yes. then, yeah. you know, sort exactly. of showing off the whole ensemble. Yeah. Yes, and she would have had, you know, gold on her arms and gold in her ears, and um, it would have been quite an extraordinary scene. Yeah. And to think she isn't even the queen. Right. What the queen would have had would have been you know, better even than this. And it's hard to imagine anything better than this because these pieces do even surpass, they um, they surpass most in collections of the world. Oh, the, yeah. the Banaki in Athens has has some diadems that are um, outrageously heavy and big and huge and big stones. Right. But this the, is a the delicate, delicacy of this, this is a delicate school is of art. extraordinary. Yeah, it's not big, heavy material. Yeah. It's, everything in here um, is done quite delicately and according to a certain very refined Well, taste. it seems like it must have been a, a goldsmith of the very highest order because from what yes. I could tell, no... There, there haven't been any shortcuts taken. In no this shortcuts, work. and it's and it's hard to imagine how someone could have, what they would have done to their eyes working on oh, the, yeah. the very fine. Yeah, um, that granulation is the granulation so tiny. Is really the, tiny. The, the so they must have had work. some sort of lenses that yeah. gave them some magnification, um, because and this this work I think also was physically very hard on people. Oh yeah, I yeah. think it was hard on their eyes, and I. And I think it was a young person's mm -hmm, work, mm -hmm. primarily. And then when you got older, you hopefully you owned yeah. the shop. Yeah, well, you, you would need to have very small, delicate small hands, hands as well. really good motor control. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, um, so it's a set of great mystery, um, and it's a set, uh, a set that um, was... Um, one of the proudest um, acquisitions of the department mm. um, that was sold to us by the Fleischmanns in New York.